We're going to be talking about this after the news at five o'clock. I'd love to get your thoughts before that. Uh, Give me a call, let me know, or you can text them in as well. All of that coming up. Up next, though, you're going to hear from someone who's uh, had quite a challenge because she's going back and recreating old photos, which is easy until you find out that she doesn't really know exactly where those photos were taken. You'll find out how she's done it and why next. It's 19 to 5 P. Worsi with you this afternoon on Drive. Have you ever recreated a photo? Maybe it's a photo that gets taken every family Christmas. You all strike the same pose in the same place and see how things have changed. It can be a pretty fascinating insight into how things do change. I wonder what those then and now comparisons can show across decades. What they show about a place or how times have changed, maybe. The Tasmania Rediscovered Project, I suspect, will be offering such an insight. Kathleen Hart is behind the project. Good afternoon. Hello, Pia. What is the Tasmania Rediscovered Project? Well, what it is, is I travelled around Tasmania in early 2019 And I had a wealth of photographs from an amateur photographer from the early 19th century. He was from Launceston. His name was H.J. King. And I had access to over 1,200 images, landscape images. He took on many excursions into the wilderness from the the Launceston base. Um, I spent many months researching the archive to identify the locations by GPS. And during my trip, I endeavoured to visit as many of the locations as I could and retake the exact same image that he took from the same spot over 100 years ago. Wow, okay. So you say uh, Herbert J. King, amateur photographer. How did you come to the story of H.J. King to start with? Well, it was serendipitous. I um, have a friend here in Brisbane. I'm actually not a not a Tas- Tasmanian. I'm a, I'm from Queensland. I had a friend here in Brisbane. I got chatting to her. We I was planning a holiday to Tasmania, and she knew I loved photography. And she said that her grandfather was actually a reasonably well known photographer back in the early nineteenth century. And I went, oh yeah. And he said, well, actually, he has photographs have featured in several books, plus we have a rich archive in the uh, Queensland Vic- uh, the, the, the Victor- uh, uh, Queen Victoria Museum and mm. Art Gallery, and she had access to all those images, and my interest was, was, was sort of stimulated. I was totally intrigued and fascinated, and when I saw the two books, the books had been published, I suddenly thought to myself, why don't I go back and recreate those images? It just came out of nowhere. It's one of these random serendipitous moments. And I thought, oh, no, that's a huge task. But what proceeded to happen was 18 months of quite intensive research, going through the photographs and actually using modern tools like GPS, Google Maps, local knowledge, the 3D angles with, with hill lines and Bridge, bridge angles, to try and find these locations again. Some were easy and some were extremely difficult. Um, but it was, like, it was like being a private detective peer. It was amazing. I can't imagine how, where you'd even start to... I mean, did you have a general region where photos were taken and then you sort of narrowed it down from there? Y- yes. Fortunately, the albums uh, at the museum had been catalogued. They weren't labelled, so there was an, each image definitely didn't have a location, but mm. he had taken several tours. His uh, family ran a, a successful motorcycle business in the early 1900s in Launceston, one of the first motorcycle distributors. So he used to go out on his uh, motorcycle with the local uh, motorcycle club in the early days in set tours. So they used to do Easter tours. So we had a fairly good idea of the location. So once we sort of nailed one or two, it was quite easy to basically identify. Obviously, if there's a feature like a bridge or obviously Mm -hmm. the well-known ones like Richmond Bridge, etc., were very well-known. One of the most curious ones is uh, a feature many of your listeners may be driving by right now, which is the Longford Railway Bridge. Um, That one was was a fascinating story, and I've done always done a little video on that. And so many people drive that past that bridge every day on their way to work, and they would never even know how glorious it looked in its day. 
You're hearing from Kathleen Hart, who's behind the Tasmania Rediscovered Project. So you've been taking these now photos to compare with the photos that H.J. King took back in the early 19th century. What are some of the more surprising things you have found in those comparisons? Well, um, mostly uh, the comparisons being t- to do with a lot of the physical uh, things like bridges. What I noticed, obviously a lot of the old bridges are gone. There's no doubt about that. Those old bridges could not be there today. What I've noticed is the beauty of the engineering constructions in the early 19th century. The bridges were not only functional, they had beautiful ornamental fixtures to them, uh, wrought iron, curled um, balustrades. They had wonderful pillars, as in the case of the Longford Railway Bridge. They had beautiful steel um, Oh, big columns. Um, and nowadays, of course, the structures are a lot more functional. Um, they're just, they're built for the function. And there doesn't seem to be that element of artistic uh, taste, I suppose, mm. to, to the structures. I mean, a lot of places I went to, not much had changed at all. Um, Tasmania has that sweetness about it that time can sometimes be incredibly kind to a lot of the places and not a lot had changed. Um, obviously, uh, Areas had completely disappeared. For example, Lota or Lota mm. in the north and east no longer exists. There's, that is a fascinating video because there is absolutely nothing left there to what was there in the day. It was a, boon, uh, a, a, a booming tin mining town and it took a lot to find that one. That video is very fascinating. It was a, one of the hardest locations I had to find. There was nothing, virtually nothing to go on and... Uh, the then and now comparison on that image is, is quite stunning. I definitely will have to. I haven't seen that one. I'll have to check it out because uh, that's quite fascinating when sort of places get reclaimed by the landscape around them. Now, Kathleen, you said it was about 18 months of research to find yes. where you needed to go to get these photos. What was it then like to stand in the same place and take that photo and what it looked like now? Well, it was actually quite bizarre. Um, there's a feeling, it, it, it was a, f- a feeling I felt of being in the exact same spot where he would have been all those years ago. I actually took the original photograph and put it in my viewfinder so I could actually look through the viewfinder, see the black and white image from over 100 years ago, then just lift my head up and look at what the view was in front of me and then look back down again. And the comparison was quite powerful. What I used to like doing was people would look at me and think I was a little bit weird because obviously a lot of these locations, your average tourist would not be (laughs) setting up a tripod and taking photographs. And people looked looked at me out of the side of their, you know, I wonder what this lady's doing here. When they came, they'd often come and ask. I'd get them to come over to the camera and I'd get them, I'd say, have a wee look in there. And what I'd do is I'd have the old image in the viewfinder and I'd look in and I'd go, oh, Wow how did you get that in there? And then they'd look up and they'd go, oh, my goodness, look, look at that. Hasn't it changed? So it was, it, was, it was fun interacting with the people. It was powerful for me because of the time I'd spent with the research. It was sometimes emotional um, when, the, when, when I could see what had happened, whether there was nothing changed, everything changed. Um, but it was the interaction with the local community while I was on the location and in fact local community helped me on many Mm. occasions. I was just about to pack up my camera one day and a lady came up to me and she said, oh that's what are you doing? Explained. She said, oh if you come down here at low tide, she said you can still see some of the the, the pylons from the original bridge. I said, really? I said, thank you so much. So engaging with the local people as I was travelling around was all part of the experience. Certainly sounds like quite an incredible experience. Kathleen, if people are interested in checking out what you've been doing and looking at some of uh, this sort of history recreated or brought to life, where should they be looking? Yes, well, look, uh, there is, I do have a Facebook page called Tasmania Rediscovered. And on that Facebook page, there is a link to my personal YouTube channel with all the series videos. The YouTube channel is Kathleen Hart. And the Facebook group is Tasmania Rediscovered. An interesting way for people to explore some more of Tasmania's history. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Yep, thank you. Kathleen Hart, who is behind the Tasmania Rediscovered Project. As you've been hearing, 18 months' work went into even researching where she needed to be going to recreate some pictures that were by uh, amateur photographer from the early 19th century, Herbert J. King.
Pretty interesting way to see how Tassie's changed. It's 10 to 5.